All right, just on 7.30, it's time now to cross over to our SABC New Age Breakfast Briefing. Today, it is happening in four ways for the official launch of the Durban 2022 Commonwealth Legacy Games Project, the Nation of Champions. Uh, some of the guests that are going to be joined by uh, Pete and Dora is Lebohang Maile, the Gauteng MEC for Sports, Arts, Culture. We've got Gideon Sam, the SASCOC President, uh, David Grievenberg, Chief Executive Officer at the Commonwealth. Wealth Games Federation, Madodo Kozwayo, the founder um, at uh, Open Tender Services, and Tami Zondi, the communications manager for Correctional Services. All right, so uh, those are just a couple of the guests. Peter, this is where I say good morning to you and hand over to you. A very good morning to you, Leanne, and uh, good morning to everybody at home, wherever you may be watching across South Africa, and in fact, across the 49 countries that are receiving this program across the continent. A very warm welcome to you. We're in Johannesburg today, in fact, in four ways, just north of Johannesburg, and this is the venue for the latest in the series of New Age Business Briefings, brought to you by the SABC, and uh, sponsored today very kindly by Transnet, and as you heard Leanne say, Durban 2022. That's where the Commonwealth Games are going to be taking place and we're very excited about that because it's the first time on the African continent that it's going to be taking place. And uh, so a lot to look forward to. The announcement was made early September. But behind that, behind all the things that you'll see on the sports fields and the many sporting events, uh, the Commonwealth Games also embrace something they call legacy projects. And uh, these are uh, projects that are taken on to uh, benefit, enhance, and contribute to the peoples that uh, particularly host the, uh, the games themselves, but I think in the Commonwealth nations in general. And so today we're here to talk about the Nation of Champions, and we're going to find out what this legacy project is about and why we have so many people here that are interested and uh, are participating and uh, partnering in making sure that this uh, project gains traction and makes a difference. And if you're a young person, you want to stay tuned to this particular program because this is a program that's going to perhaps unlock some doors for you and change your life. And we certainly look forward to hearing more about that. And you can be part of the conversation, hashtag TNA Biz Brief, that's B-I-Z, or at Morning Life SABC if you want to get any more questions and clarity on that. Let's meet our guests, though, who are going to help us with this conversation. It's my great pleasure to start here by welcoming the MEC for Economic Development, Environment, Agriculture, and Rural Development. How long is your business card? <laughs> <laughs> MEC Welcome to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next to you, we have uh, somebody who's come from uh, London. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the Commonwealth Games Federation. And these are the people that are pretty much responsible for putting on the games. Uh, Mr. David Kremberg, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. And thank welcome. You. Welcome Pleasure. to South Africa. Next to you, somebody that is very familiar to South Africa, uh, particularly when these big sporting events uh, uh, come into play, uh, Sascot President and also the Vice President of the Commonwealth Games Federation, Mr. Gideon Sam. Thank you very much for joining yeah. us and welcome mm -hmm. to you. Next to him is a young man that you're going to hear a lot about in the future and uh, he's the CEO and co-creator of this whole legacy project that we're talking about, Nation of Champions Social Network, Mr. Madoda Kuzwaya. Thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you. Okay, and next to you we have Mr. Tami Zondi, who's the manager for the Youth Economic Empowerment, KZN uh, EDTEA, and we welcome you as well because we're talking about young people. You understand them, and you look like a young person yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have your voice. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you all very much for joining us. I'm not quite sure where to start, but I guess maybe let's start at the beginning. Commonwealth Games, let's start with you, Mr. Hemberg. Commonwealth Games 2022, Durban was chosen. Why? Durban was chosen um, simply because of the ambition and aspirations of the city, of the nation of South Africa, you know, gave uh, uh, an enormous, uh, I think, inspiration to our 71 members of nations, and uh, with confidence, they unanimously um, endorsed this proposal to award these games 
um, and to take this journey uh, with South Africa uh, for the future vision of the organization. Uh, a few weeks ago, we also refreshed uh, our vision and strategic direction as an organization, and it's very much in keeping um, with, I think, some of the ambitions and aspirations um, of uh, this journey to, to 2022. And in fact, we actually labeled our strategic direction Transformation 2022, and it speaks to how sport engages citizens and communities in a very, very meaningful way to really drive peaceful, sustainable, and prosperous communities globally. Yeah. And it's going to start here at home in South Africa. All right, so we're going to unpack that a little bit further. And uh, Mr. Sam, I'm glad that you're here because you're wearing two hats, SASCOP president, but also with the Commonwealth Games Federation. And maybe you can introduce to us the idea of legacy projects. Why are they important? Why do we attach them to things like the Commonwealth Games? And then we'll start getting into this particular one. Mm. <clears throat> I think if you look at the development of sport throughout the world now, you will notice that within the IOC as well as in, within the Commonwealth Games Federation, the issue of legacy when you have games in a particular country or city has become very important now. People are asking questions, why do you bring the games here? Why are the games not there? And everyone in those organizations is trying to work out as to how best they can leave something behind in that particular city. And if you look at the history of most of the cities that have hosted, you can see the changes. Look at London, the, the Olympic Games there. Look at um, Glasgow, 2014. We said to ourselves as the Commonwealth Games Federation, the body, that in, within the Commonwealth Secretariat, we need to develop programs that will be very good for the people of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And besides, precisely because of that, we then decided that if we are going to host, we are not going to wait until the last moment. We have to start ensuring that young people understand it right now. It's how many days after the announcement? It was on the 2nd of Six, September. Yeah, so. And we are now 23rd of, 20 days later. We are already telling young people in this country you have to come on board to ensure that there is something for you within the games. And we chose, having studied the National Development Plan, having studied everything within the departments of our government, what is important to them. And we've seen that it's skills and young people. And that is the focus of Nation of Champions, looking at how we can enhance their skills in this seven-year period that we are going to work from now until 2022. At the end of 2022, we need to say to this country, <clears throat> look at the thousands mm -hmm. of people, mm -hmm. of young people, who have gone through this program of, the new, of, of skills development. And if you, if, you, if you take that into consideration, then you will see that it is something that is going to be a real legacy. We're not talking about volunteers here. Volunteers will be part of the process, but this is how we are going to make a plumber a real plumber. Okay. How we are going to make an electrical engineer a real, not the one who carried the tools, <laughs> okay. the one who's really yeah. at the center yeah. of it. And that's, and that's what it's all about. And the details of how that is going to happen is for the rest of the team to talk about. All right, well, let's turn then to uh, Mr. Kuzwayo, who's the CEO and co-creator of this uh, Nation of Champions social network. So social network, I guess, gives us a clue to what this Nation of Champions is. A lot of people will think that we're here to create sportsmen, but this is much bigger than this, isn't it? Tell yeah. us a little bit about this project, what you had in mind, and what do you see as it doing in building our nation? No, definitely, Peter, it's bigger than just sport. Mm. Uh, I think we're using sport as an analogy in terms of how champions are created. And if you look at the National Development Plan of South Africa, which says by 2030, we need to create about 11 million jobs. And about 90% of those jobs must be created by small businesses. Now, you take it a little bit further, if you look at the Commonwealth, you know, the whole 71 nations, South Africa is no different. We're sitting with a population of under 30, I mean, 60% 
50% of our population is under the age of 30 years. And if we then saying by 2020, I mean 2030 or even 2022, 20, 20, 20, we're expecting these young people that are in TV colleges to be job creators. We're expecting them to be carrying the country forward. The question is, are they aware? Number one of the responsibility that they have, are they inspired enough? Are they dreaming big enough? Is there support? You know, that actually carries them forward to saying we can start today because I don't think you wake up in 2022 and say I want to win a gold medal. Mm. You start today. You need mentors, you need coaches. Sometimes you fail, but you've got a support system that carries you. So the whole nation of champions using the technology that exists today. And I'll give you an example. You might have woken up today, you checked in on Facebook, mm -hmm. and then you WhatsApp your friend before you get here. And maybe you press a button, Uber picked you up to <laughs> drop you here. My question is, where's Africa in all of this? Mm -hmm. Throughout that process, someone is getting paid. So our world is changing. We're being invaded. The economies of scale in terms of the digital economy, for example, that is worth about 335 billion today. We're not participating. We're continuing to be consumers. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, how do we start preparing our young people for the opportunities of the future, the jobs of the future, so that by 2022, we have digitally connected and skilled young people that can compete globally and create the jobs that we need. And that's really what mm -hmm. Nation of Champions is All about. Right. So uh, just to get a bit more clarity and in simple terms, I'm a young person, I'm in Kiawela and Soweto right now. What is going to be my experience logging into this Nation of Champions website? How is it going to change my life? First of all, if you've been in business, you will know that being an entrepreneur can be a lonely journey. Okay? Mm. You have to get in, into a network of people with the same mind and same mentality that wants to win. So getting into Nation of Champions, you sign up today, you'll find other young people that you can connect with, that you can network with, that you can actually start selling to. Mm. That's number one. Secondly, we're calling on procurement opportunities from government, private sector, enterprise development opportunities, supply chain development opportunities. When you speak to private sector, private sector always says we can't find young people that we can actually take on our supply chain. Now they are a nation of champions. So right there, there are opportunities. Also, we built in there a fully fledged online university. So in terms of you as a person, as an entrepreneur, your own development, because I, I, I don't think your business can be better than the leader that is actually leading the business. So right there, we've built education that will build you in order to take your business forward. All right, we're going to pack a lot of those features again. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, fortunately for us, actually, because they pay my salary. So we're going to take <laughs> a quick break. And then when we come back, I want to hear from uh, our MEC and also Mr. Zondi. Uh, so stay with us. And then we're also going to get your messages. Uh, hashtag TNA Biz Brief and Morning Live SABC. We'd like to hear your thoughts and perhaps your questions as well. All right, stay with us for that.